Blog Talk Radio. I like a brown day. The color is so sweet. Like my cherry cola on my favorite chocolate tree. Full of espresso. Cafe LA. Imported from the Bayou, baby. Just to make my day. I like a brown day. Makes me want to eat. From the top of his head down to the soles of his feet. And did I mention everything in between? Now lick it, sugar, daddy, make a sundae. I'll go clean and play around, babe. In every flavor, the richer the mixture, the more I can savor. Brown, babe. But when I kiss his lips, now the cover of strawberry juice is on my chin. Ask not a walnut, don't ask banana, a warm vanilla sugar. He can't brown his blender, cause I was got nothing on the top of rubber tape. Brown, tan, black, man. It makes my honey love come down What a scotch bay In my German chocolate cake Let me lick the bowl Put it in my oven to bake I love the brown bay Smalls are fun to eat And the marshmallow drips From my lips to my feet I'm an apple Sweet and sour That's what's up Take me to the candy shop Cause I can't get enough Mrs. P's bay Ask if Mrs. Fields around I'm trying to catch a gingerbread man If he's in town I like a brown bay Pick the fruit from the shell, cause now it's ready. The pound cake is waiting to hit the belly. I'm holding back from skipping and eating the jelly. You like the brown, ma? Well, here's the chocolate shit. Some caramel colored almond for you to taste. Bite it through the watch the dark syrup drip to your chin. A glass of caffeine, a dash of caffeine on the rim. You like the brown, ma? Smell my cinnamon aroma, inviting and enticing you to have me eat your mocha. Put it together. She works and she gets to the sense of looky looky. She happy with a surprise from a tootsie marshmallow grab cracker. Hershey bar mix, peanut butter all over the switch. It's a cool way around the rich. My products are way better grades than the switch. Creme brulee from the brick. You like the brown shit. Do tell, I like my cupcakes still. They say I'm wrong for the pleasure. I have no guilt. It's natural, spill soy on you, the color of silk. Ain't no boy in the belt. Cause I've been drinking my milk. Yes, welcome to another episode of Hear No Evil here at blogtalkradio.com. I'm your host. Darlene Lewis, and tonight's guest is Terry Woods, the author. She will be calling in the show a little later. And just sit tight, and we'll be right back. Darlene. Yes, Terry. What happened? Harry? Welcome back to blogtalkradio.com. I'm your host, Darlene Lewis. Now, 
we have a medical moment, and I want to give you some valid information for you AARP members. There's a special offer going on. You can finally have all of the soothing benefits of a relaxing, warm bath or enjoy a convenient, refreshing shower while seated or standing. Introducing Safe Step Walk-In Tubs Exclusive New Shower Package. Or plus a free shower package. Call Safe Step at 1 800 990 8003 and let them know that BuckTalkRadio.com show Hear No Evil sent you to them. Now, today's guest, Terry Woods, her latest book, a biography based on the ups and downs. Of the publishing world So far we have the The board light lit up We have a caller calling in from 646-617 Are you on the air caller? Okay well we have Terry Woods on the other line Hey Terry how you doing? Hey how are you Darlene? <laughs> Congratulations on, on the movie uh, Being released but we'll talk about that later so, Terry Woods, you have been very busy lately. Tell us what's going on. Tell us about this new book. Oh, okay. Well, the new book is called Terry's Game. And it's like a little memoir slash publishing journal, uh, tell all as far as, you know, just things about industry, um, what you need to know if you want to publish a book. Um, but it just gives you more of an insight into into my world and into the world of publishing. Now, what prompted you to write this book? You know, I um, I have been approached several times about uh, doing a, a story um, or doing a, a film about about my journey in publishing, and you know, like how I started selling books out the trunk of the car and sleeping in my car and stuff like that. And people don't realize that True to the Game is 27 years old, um, Mm. 27, 28 years old. But I just didn't want to be rewritten, and I didn't want the truth not to be told, or I just didn't want somebody else writing, rewriting me or or rewriting, you know, um, my journey. Wow. So, and it's best to get the information from the horse's mouth. Now, a lot of people know know you from the book, True to the Game. Tell some of the uh, listeners that don't know about True to the Game what the book is about. Hello? I'm sorry, you totally blacked out. What did you say, sweetheart? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with this digital world we're living in. So, true to the game, for those that don't know about the book, tell the listening audience what true to the game is really about. So, true to the game is a book that I wrote back in 1992. I started writing it, and basically, it's it's really a classic love story. Um, but it's it's drawn during the 80s, the late 80s, um, and it's drawn during that, that real, I wouldn't say crack era, but drug era we went through. Um, and so Quadir is a wealthy drug dealer, and he meets this girl, and they, you know, basically fall in love, but he has a lot of baggage with him. And so it's a lot of action because the mafia is after him, and, um, you know, then he has rival drug dealers and drug lords that are, that are also going to be after him. So it's it's just a little it's a spin on a on a on a love story. But it it is really um I think deep down inside it's really like a a love story just just in an urban urban setting that is um that is during the 80s. Now, True to the Game is a cult classic, and so a movie was made from your book. How was that experience? Tell us how that happened. How did you luck up to get a book uh, turned into a movie? Well, basically, I tried getting a deal. Um, I tried getting a situation um, at at 
at pretty much all of the studios. I tried, um, you know, mergers and acquisitions. I tried to get a deal. And so nothing really, really came through for me um, as far as trying to get a situation at a studio. I was able to get my first film deal. That was with Cash Money. Um, and that was by a chance meeting I had with Method Man, who introduced me to James Ellis, and they put a situation together. That was back in the beginning of uh, 2001, and so that didn't happen. The film never happened. My rights came back to me, and then I did another subsequent deal in, like, 08, 09 with Manny Haley, who um, – who was a friend of mine. I had known him for about four years and um, he came to me and said that he really wanted to make films and he felt like he could get true to the game. Uh, he, he felt like he could get a situation for it or get it made. And so I did a deal with Manny and, um, and the rest is history and got the film rights and he, and he got it made. So I'm, I'm really, and- really happy about it. Because it's really yeah, the, hard. For, first of all, that was a great. First of all, I love the way the movie was shot, the lighting, the the scenery, um, the script itself was just so good. And then the casting. How did you get the cast? Like, who, did, did you have a part in casting? Who? I didn't. I didn't get. Absolutely not. Um, initially, I know Manny. Um, initially, was working with the. Um, beautiful, talented, and notorious Leah Daniels, who is Lee Daniels' sister from Empire. And so Mm -hmm. I also know that, you know, Manny himself has amazing contacts, obviously, coming from the music industry. So he was able to also utilize his contacts. I know Columbus also made calls and, um, you know, they, they, they got it. They they put it together, so okay. they got it done. And it's so you got, me. so he got Vivica Fox. Oh my God, Erica Peoples, Columbus Short, and the the handsome guy that shot Cordell. Oh God, he's he's a handsome dude. And now I see Andre Fuller. Yes, yes, he's a man. He's been seen in a lot of movies. You know, yes. and I think that true to the game um, um, helped him it get a lot of parts for for a lot of people. I think it's great. Yeah. So I see that there's a sequel to True to the Game. Aren't you pleased? Congratulations on that. Yes, I'm really excited. I'm happy to see it done. I know that. They just, oh, yeah, we I don't think people everybody. realize the work that it takes or the dedication that it takes and then the human talent that's involved that comes together to actually get a film done. Yeah, I want to, well, so to I think it's amazing, and I'm really excited. So we have callers that are holding on, I hear in the background. Caller, do you have a question, or would you like to speak to the fabulous Terry Woods? Please say who you are. Hold on a second. She went to get the door. Hello? Okay, hello? we have a caller with the... Can Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm sorry. Just as I wanted to talk, the doorbell rang and the doors were barking. I'm okay, sorry. Okay, well, you're going to have to mute something because we're getting a little distortion. We hear dogs. Who are you and what's your name? And, what is, and you have, you're on the line now with Terry Woods. Is there something that you wanted to say to her? I just wanted to say that I enjoyed the movie, Two to the Game. It put me in the mind of my life back in the day when I was going out with a guy and at the end that he got killed and I was left really well, not that I have it anymore. But I just love the whole, the whole script and I hope the new book is coming out. It will be just as good. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, great. Oh, and what's you your so name? Much. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Manhattan, and my name is Christine Riley, and they call me Tina, and I live in Harlem. Wow. Thank you, Tina. Can you hear me? Can she hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, thank you, Tina. Thank you. I really appreciate you. 
I've been waiting to just get this call in, and then the dogs went to bark. I wanted to just shoot them. But no, I mean, it was so much like my life was. I didn't want to go out with this guy. I had met him when he was incarcerated, and I kept going to see him. And as soon as he came out, he promised me this and promised me this. And he brought it all, the house, the cars, and everything. And in the blink of an eye, he was gone. Right, and I was with him, too. So I was like, damn, are they talking about me? Um, wow. Well, Tina, Miss Tina, you know that there's three books. So mm-hmm. I don't know if you got to read all three books, but there's three books and there'll be three movies. And so mm-hmm. the second one is about to come out November 6th. So you're going to be really surprised. All right. I'm going to talk to Dolly because she was the one that I told that I wanted to call in about it to tell her how much I thought it reminded me of myself. And whoever wrote it, they did an excellent job. Excellent. Because so many of us don't want to really acknowledge it, but that's how we got along, too. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Well, I'll be reading your books in the near future, and I thank you for listening. Thank you for um, supporting me. I really appreciate it. I really do. And I'm sorry about the dogs, but I'm going to go now. Thank you. (laughs) Good night. Yes, well, stay Bye-bye. on and, and, and listen. She'll be with us for a couple of minutes. But um, do you see, you have a fan that actually lived that life. Yeah, but now, I didn't a lot want the of people just the barking, you know. So that's why I had to come in the room and close it. But I can't leave them in the bathroom like that. So I'll right. get in touch with Darlene and I'll see if I can get the books. Okay. Okay. Well, you can always go to terrysgame dot com and get all of her books and get her latest all right. book. I will Thank definitely you. do that. Okay. Game, right? I was talking Isn't to my girlfriend. She was listening, so there's two of us interested now. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, good night. Night, night. Oh, wow, Terry. So, see, your book is speaking to people that actually know and live that life. And speaking of people that live that life, you have the book Terry's Game out. Tell us uh, how people can get the book and... Uh, how's it going? How's, how's the, the response been for the book? Everybody absolutely enjoys it. They love it. They can't put it down. They said they read it in like a day or two. They can't stop reading as usual. So Well, you know, I've read it twice. I read it twice. I read it twice. I read it twice because I had to I had to go back because you was mentioning situations and I said, Wait a minute. Um, you okay, gotta really is... pay attention. There is not every page. I would say that there's probably every page in that book is there's something going on. There's something that you could learn from. There's something that you think you know that you didn't know, and it's definitely, you know, when I look back on the journey, um, and all of the players and all of the people that 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 were involved. Um, you know, and just reminiscing about, you know, about what was accomplished and how it was accomplished and the people who were um, in the room getting it accomplished. I just I just like the way that that book is, um, the way it turned out, and I love the response that I'm getting, and um, and, and, and I just think it's great. It's, um, it's available at terrysgame.com, and it's also available at amazon.com. So you can get it from those two places. So you wrote Dutch, Be More Careful, Deadly Rain. No, like, now how Shannon Holmes is the, well, wait, Shannon Holmes, I published all those books. I published all of them. Shannon authored uh, Be More Careful and sent it to me while he was in, um, in prison. Kwame sent me Dutch, and I, you know, I basically rewrote them and, and published them and sold them. I did it all by myself. Wow. So when you listen, a lot of people um want to write, they want to they want to publish, but in your opinion, what do you think is the best the best method to getting your books out? Um I mean, you have to write the book and then you have to figure out how what platform you want to release it. So now we have print, you have e-books, you have audio books. So, you know, those are the three platforms, print, e-book, and audio book. 
and I always suggest people should try to make their books available on all three platforms. Um, you know, for me right now, I'm just going to print, and I'm going to keep Terry's game in print for a while because it's a new title. Eventually, it will go to ebook format. But right now, it's just going to stay in print. Right now, and all of my books, all, all of the titles are available in print, and they're available in ebook, and they're available in audiobook. And what are some of the hurdles you had to go through when you, uh, when you, when you wrote your book? You mean the first one or yeah. now? True to the game. Um, True to the Game was a lot of hurdles only because it was like 30 years ago, and so we really didn't have a lot of technology, and I didn't have any information. So I had, you know, it was like just venturing into unknown unknown territory. Um, I had to really pretty much figure everything out as I went along because there was no blueprint, there was nothing for me to follow, there was no internet, there was no Google, search engines, nothing. Um, So those were the challenging things. I would say back then, along with all of the regular stuff that you would face with any type of product, which is marketing, uh, shipping, distribution, stuff like that. So um, it, it continues to be challenging. Um, even to this day. And then you have to deal with the black market and the bootleggers. Now, that's just something that a lot of people aren't prepared to deal with. What do you suggest to protect yourself and your titles? Um, I mean, this is the thing. It's a gift and a curse. And so you can't really do anything about that. You just have to... Uh, <laughs> Like I said, it's a gift and a curse. If you're oh, if you're good enough to uh, if you're good enough to 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 be copied, then you're uh, you're blessed in a sense. Mm. If, if you're good enough to be stolen, you should mm. count that as a blessing. Um, that's what wow. I thought. That's like the music industry. Yeah, count it as a blessing um, and keep moving. Keep moving. Don't get stuck in, you know, what what is going on. A lot of artists, um, you know, have had to handle that, and and it is hard. So um, I don't know if... If, if it was on the scale of, of, of what I endured as an independent artist, it's excruciating to be sold. Um, mm. I, I do think it's different when you're signed to a major label or a major corporation and they're, they're feeding you regardless. Um, but it's, it's another thing when it, when it happens and you're an independent artist. Um, but again, you have to count it as a blessing and know that um, it is a crime against God and you will be replenished in another way. You'll be fine. Mm. Now, You'll be fine. You, have, you have written a children's book. I've written six children's books. W- wow. Are you serious? Two of Let's them talk about by myself. Oh, mm-hmm. so which, which ones should, uh, which one's your favorite and tell us about it? They're all my favorites, but I think the one that's probably closest to me is um, the, the the best I can be, which is um, based on uh, the love, values, and morals program that I developed for pre-K and kindergarten students. So mm. that's probably my favorite one. But it's about you know um, values and morals. And so it teaches little children um, what those words mean and uh, introduces them to manners and love and kindness. So that's what, that's, 
that's basically the premise of, of my favorite book out of the entire collection. But the entire collection is like a series. Um, so it's a five. It's actually like a five book series, and then it, and then it ventures off into um, different worlds. There's there's like three different worlds that come out of this series. Hmm. Now, you know, it's so funny. You you met a need, which is definitely important nowadays because it seems like people have forgotten how to uh, to respect, you know, their fellow men. Parents are not really, um, what's the word? They're not really disciplining children, and they're depending on teachers to teach them manners. So that book sounds like, the recipe for saving uh, the future generation, and how can uh, mothers or schools um, or teachers and principals get your get those children's books? Because that's a whole different genre for you, right? Um, so TerryWoodsKids.com, um, www.TerryWoodsKids.com, T-E-R-I-W-O-O-D-S-K-I-D-S. And that's basically where I have my children's stuff. Um, and you can email me. Um, the books are also there for sale. Um, but that's that's one of the things that I've been I've been basically doing um, and building slowly um, as I go along. So I'm I'm building it. It's it's a build. It's been a build. I've been doing. The children's book since 2012 People don't realize I started writing them In 2012 That's been 8 years And then I became a vendor With the Department of Education In 2016 So that's mm-hmm. 4 years Of service in the DOE And then people don't realize That um, I actually first Published the books in 2015 um, and, and so I've been selling them You know as I go Wow. Well, that's amazing. So we have, uh, we seem to have another caller that has called in. Uh, caller, starting with the number 617, we have Terry Woods on the line. Would you like, do you have a question for the author? Hi, Ms. Woods. Uh, my name is Shonda, and I am also an author of three books. And I just wanted to tell you that uh my adult years raising my children as a single mother, your books got me through one point to another. You were such an inspiration to me to write my stories when I got grown and was able to do so. And I just want to commend you for the work and the platform you've laid out for us younger black women authors. And you pretty much set a genre for us. You know, my books have been about my life. I've been chronicling the events from growing up in Harlem to corporate America to going to California, taking my journey there. And I'm just so excited. I'm trembling because I'm actually getting to talk to you. So I just wanted to thank you for what you've done for us black women authors. And I want to congratulate you on the movie, the book to film process, and actually seeing your dream realized. And I just want to ask you one question. Did ever in your journey, did you feel like you were never going to make it and you wanted to give up? All the time. Yes. All the time. All the time. So can you give me a little bit of advice? On my journey, because I also have degrees and other things I'm doing. But if you could give me a few words of inspiration I could take away with me tonight, that would be great. Okay, so let me just say this, right? Let me, you know, and and I said that about Ginger in my children's book, right? Right. Um, eight years. I wrote that book eight years ago. Wow. I started writing I started writing them eight years ago. Um, no one would publish them. Oh. They were turned down. And I'm a New York Times best selling author. Yes, sure. Um Yeah, no one would publish Ginger. And you Go just figure. kept piled in the pavement and having the Okay, faith. so listen, I'm I'm a New York Times best selling author. 
and no one would give me a deal for ginger. No one would publish mm. ginger. Wow. But yet, but yet, once I go out there and I start selling ginger and I start going to schools, I'm able to become a vendor with the DOE. Right. Which is impossible in New York. Nobody gets to be a vendor with them. Jesus, God, That's right. you know that. That's right. Wow. That's right. Giuliani, whichever one of them shut that shit down a long time ago for us. So it's hard to become a vendor. What I'm saying to you is, but they turned me down. Mm-hmm. I could have gave up right there. Okay, I'm a New York Times best-selling author. You think that I should have to stand outside and sell my books on 125th Street? Of or course. should I go give up? No. Should I give up? Well, I, that's what I got to do. Should you I give up? Pound the pavement. No, you have to keep. Should I give up? No, 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 no. But no. why should I have to sit? Right. But why should I have to stand out there and try to sell you a book as you're walking down the street? Why should I have to go through that? Jackie Collins. Should I give up? You know, she was a New York Times best-selling author. She didn't have to stand on the corner of Wilshire Boulevard either. You know what I mean? However, it's different for us, and we have to go through different avenues to success. So You wanted I me commit- to leave you with something that would inspire you. Okay. There's no level. There's no plateau or there's no pedestal that you can put yourself on where mm-hmm. you can't humble yourself enough mm-hmm. to go do what you need to do. If you believe in yourself, and so I guess mm. if I ins- if I can inspire you with anything, is to know that, you know, yeah, I know my greatness. Yeah, I know this. Yeah, I know that. But if I got to get out there and I got to make my kids hand out pencils and balloons and bags of candy, whatever it takes. Wow. Terry, you dropped yourself. Yeah. Hold on. Terry. Well, I know she's product. in. Okay, there you go. You de- you blacked out for a minute. Oh, I was just saying that no matter what you have to do, you might have to humble yourself a little bit in order to sell your products to your people because we're right. so blocked and we're so, you know, we're, we're so unable to do that effectively with one another. And so sometimes you have to go the extra mile and just don't, just don't give up. Don't worry about what the next person is doing or what somebody else thinks or what somebody else says. You got to go do what you got to do if you believe in your work. And if you believe in it, then work it. Just don't give up. Just keep going. It might take years. It could take years. True to the game sat in the closet from 90, what, 95, 96. It sat in the closet until 1998. It was just sitting there doing nothing. Who knew? And so you just got to believe in yourself and just don't give up. But don't, don't, uh, don't, don't think that you might not have to, to bend a little bit to make it work. And if you got to bend a little bit or you got to go the extra mile or you got to put yourself out there and you're like, oh, my God, who does this? You know what? You do it. You do it. Okay. Thank you. Shonda, um, you mentioned yes. uh, that you wrote three books. What are the titles of your books? My books are called Sauce Boss 1, 2, and Sauce Boss ha- Harlem to Hollywood, which I dedicated to Darlene Lewis because she also started me on this journey. She gave me the tips Aww. that I needed to self-publish. And Darlene was very instrumental in my literary process, so that third book was dedicated to none other than Darlene Lewis. And, you know, I haven't given up. I'm going to still work my thing, you know, and I just am so honored to be able to hear from you, Miss Woods. Thank you for your inspiration. Oh, thank you, and thank you. Thank you for your support, and, you know, if, if I helped inspire you, I think that that is wonderful, but you guys really don't realize how much you've inspired me until Darlene tell her she has to read Terry's game to really understand the journey. I think that if you read that, like if you read Terry's game, it's right. it's like you would be like, wow, I had no idea how hard it was. Like 
people think it's easy. It's not wow. easy. Yeah, so, I so get her book at terrysgame.com. Terrysgame.com is available for uh, at Terry's Game. Terry's Game is available at terrysgame.com, and it's like a master class in print. That's right. that's what I got from it because when I read it, first of all, when I, well, first of all, I have been waiting for this book, right? Because I was one of the lucky ones to do the pre-order, right? Mm-hmm. So when I mm-hmm. got the book, you know, I had to go in the porcelain office, which is the bathroom, because that's where I really, really focused. I got my little candles burning. I had my little coconut, you know, bubble bath, and I had a low light on. I put a low light on. I put my reading glasses on, and I had a little light, and I just read it, and I kept reading. Every time I felt myself dozing off, like I would put the water on warmer, because I didn't want to leave the bathroom without, um, and I read it, and then when I texted Terry, I said, "Okay, I finished the book." I'm, I'm, and she, I know she probably was laughing at me, but I could not put the book down. I was determined to finish that book in one wow. day, and I was able wow. to do it because I heard her voice and I started re- reminiscing on um, her journey, and and during the moments that she was talking, I recall her talking about these things. But you know, a lot of people be like, "Oh, you know, famous writers." You know, I don't. I didn't look at her as this famous writer. I looked right. at her as like just you know, she's just regular, exactly. you know, regular smegular. You know what I mean? But she started mentioning people that I knew. Then I started thinking she's going through all of this and she's able to maintain a smile on her face and she's still friendly and she's still giving advice and she's still accepting phone calls. Cause you know, when certain people start making money. Right. Um, you know Terry. You know how people get. They start making money. You know they act different. And I really, know, you're not. I know the, how a lot of yeah. people can can turn. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know, and every time I was able to release a book or publish my own, I kept saying, "What would Terry Woods do? What would Terry Woods do?" Okay, Terry went through this. Oh God, she tried to tell me. But I didn't listen. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you all something. And I know this may sound like the punk way out. I'm so glad I had a job. I know that's I'm right. So glad because I was able to invest in my dream. Because yes. it's hard. Like, you know, not for nothing, Terry, you were very lucky. Mm-hmm. People don't you, realize I'm like a little lucky cat over here. Like it, it, <laughs> my girlfriend said it to me last night. She's like, you know, you're like really lucky, bitch. I'm like, I know, I know, I know. Uh, like and you, I count my blessings every day, and I stay on my knees. But this is the thing, you know, I'm not. It's not been what people think it's been, and that's the crazy part. It's not. It's not been, I mean, yeah, it's been an amazing journey, but, I mean, I don't think people realize, you know, what happened in, you know, to the publishing industry. And, you know, I don't think that people realize um, that I, as a small business, uh, really took a loss when the Internet came around, as most publishers did. You know, even Jet and Ebony are gone right now. Mm. So the fact that I've, you know, maintained, I've had my business for 20 years, just being able to say I self-published this book, it's in print, you know, it's available for my business. Um, All that, all that stuff is, 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 is is very, is very commendable right now. I really don't think people understand when I look at COVID and what's happened with small businesses and, you know, um, people losing. There was no stimulus for us when the mm-hmm. Internet came. There was no stimulus for small black businesses, for small black bookstores, for mom and pop bookstores. There was no stimulus for, for listen, Borders, B. Dalton, Walden, all of them shut down overnight and filed bankruptcy. Um, wow. I just don't think that people realize uh, the journey and how hard it has been uh, transitioning, uh, the ups, the downs, um, and and just recognizing all of it and being able to move forward is is just so important. 
But um, yeah. But so are you excited about the movie, the sequel, the sequel, baby girl? Like, aren't you yeah. jumping for joy? <laughs> I'm excited because my characters are being brought to life, and I've always wanted my characters to be brought to life. It's, it's really been my thing. I've been trying to do it since since '04. Um, you know, I'm sorry, '01. I've been trying. I've been trying to do it since '01. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's been everything. Been, and then you got, and then you got more actors and more famous people that's going to be playing in it. Like, who gets that opportunity? Like, who, who are some of your angels that you have to thank? I mean, obviously, Manny and Yolanda have really gone out their way to make it all happen, and they brought it. They really brought the pieces to life. And so, um, you know, I just thank everybody from Erica to Columbus to Vivica to Starletta, um, the initial cast and the initial people who um, worked on True to the Game 1 because there wouldn't be a 2 without the 1, and the 1 was a really big sacrifice for a lot of folks getting that movie done. Um, and so, I, like I said, I, I, I don't think people realize how hard it is, um, you know, and, and, and the money and the time and things that it takes to uh, actually get a movie done. It's, it's mm. really hard. It's not easy. They're not giving that platform. They've never given us that platform. And so, you know, I think until the last couple of years um, and the success of of, of black films, uh, the doors are opening. So I hope that True to the Game is just, you know, another one of those situations that helps open more doors for people of color. Mm -hmm. And would you be um, willing to... Uh, help new writers or are you just focusing on your books? I mean, right now I'm in a I'm in a I'm in a space where, you know, I'm working on uh my producing skills, uh mm-hmm. putting things together for, for my content. Um mm-hmm. but honestly I am really focused on my ginger giraffe right now. Mm. Now tell us um, and about I wanna Ginger my, Giraffe. Yeah, I want to. I want to do my cartoon really bad, so oh. I'm really focused on on doing a cartoon and storyboards and putting a team. Do you together need to Do you need it. animators? Um, I'm looking for animators right now and um, starting to put that process together. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Um, definitely looking for 2D animators. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I may have somebody, but some some people to send to you, but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to Ginger Giraffe because you know I I delve yeah, into Ginger writing my heart. I book. love her. I I really love her. And then the other thing that I'm doing is I'm putting together. I want to write my own script, and I'm not a script writer, but I'm writing my own script for Terry's Gaze. Nobody, mm. nobody can. That's my life, so I got to do that myself. Yeah. And would mm-hmm. you play yourself, or would you find somebody else to play you? Make a young, younger version. No, 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 no. I'm not an actress, older. so I wouldn't try to. I'm not no actress, so that's not happening. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's not going to happen. Somebody Ooh, would that actually would be have a to movie. Uh, would have to play that, me. That would be a movie, girl. That whole listen. That whole listen. Shonda, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. You have to get the book Terry's Game. I certainly will. You have to get that book to all your friends and everybody that's on hold right now. I'm so sorry, but I have sponsors that I have to deal with. And guys, I want to thank you, girls, for and everyone for calling in and um. 
Listen, this has been, you know, a long time coming, Miss Woods. We've been trying to get you on this show for a while. And uh, once again, I want everybody to congratulate Terry Woods on True to the Game and all of her success. And go get her book, Terry's Game, which is at terrysgame.com. And um, will there be a New York screening of the of the uh, movie, a, a premiere party, or no? I don't know if they're doing anything in New York. Um, okay. I'm hopeful, but I don't know, uh, Darlene. I don't have any specifics yet. Um, yeah. I do know that they're planning um, to do a premiere, but I, I don't know if it's going to be in New York or if it's going to be in Atlanta or if it's going to be in L.A. I'm not sure what the plans are. Okay. Well, keep me posted because I definitely would love to come see it and uh, probably do like a little premiere party. Uh, so we'll, you know, we'll see. Because this you sounds know, my like only a great thing, thing right now is with the my only thing right now is with the COVID. I just, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I don't know, um, and I just want people to stay safe as well. You know, so I don't know what 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 I don't even know what I'm doing yet. But oh like, wow! You know, you know what? For a second, I forgot all about COVID. <laughs> like, what is yeah, yeah like, I don't know what's be... going on out here yeah. right now, but we will we, Oh we'll my see. God! So how? You know, that's going to be weird um, for it to be in theaters with COVID. It's probably going to be like twenty five percent population. Yeah, They're, we'll have you to. Know. Like I said, I don't. I have no idea. Like I'm. Playing it ear by ear, COVID has been the reason why it's taken so long for it yeah. to be released. So, mm. you know, you just well, you just I see. mean, you, you know, know you it would go see. over well no, digitally as well. But you know, people got to do what they got to do because in the, the and now what's the difference if it shows in a the theater or like on Apple? TV or Amazon or Netflix? Like, is it more money in a theater? Of course. It I think always, always I, technically, uh, before COVID, I would say definitely the theater, you know, was the uh, was the real take. Um, okay. But, again, COVID has, I mean, you already know that. The movies go into the box office and make 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 million, 100 million in a weekend. So that's, you know, come on, that was the dream. COVID yeah. has, you know, everybody shook right now. So, yeah. mm. you know, I, I don't have the answers on that one. I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a little skeptical myself with, with COVID. I, I don't know, I don't know what to say. Um, but well, I'm just saying no, it by ear. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you, Miss Woods, Miss Terry Woods. For calling in blogtalkradio.com on the Hear No Evil show. And I wish you all the success. Congratulations on actually getting a release date for the sequel, True to the Game, which I look forward to. And I'm looking forward to uh, everything that you're doing. And I appreciate everything that you do. Also, if you guys listening, Please go to terryswood.com. Also, please go to the Literary Ladies Book Tour.com where we have our books and you can find out about tour information and our virtual book tour that I'm working on. So, um, I'll talk to you ladies later and uh, thank you for calling thank in. Thank you, Darlene, for having me. I really appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for all the support and for reading me. You know, I appreciate you. Yes, because you. you are the queen of Urban Lit. <laughs> Talk well, to you thank later. Thank you, my darling. All Bye, right. baby. Bye. That was Terry Woods, and um, what a what a talented writer, and we wish her all of the luck, and we'll be right back. Hey. Hey.
slash hear no evil. Hear no evil. Now, also, this radio show will be transferred to our podcast on anchor.fm and seven other platforms. So if you weren't able to get it on Blog Talk Radio, believe me, you will get it on seven platforms, including Spotify. If you're interested in sponsoring any of our segments, remember there's a one-time fee, and you also get promoted on our TV show, Celebrity Showcase. So go to literaryladies.com. I'm sorry, literaryladiesbooktour.com, and click on the necessary links and uh, send your information. All the instructions is there. Tell us about your product, goods, and services, and your event. If you want to get any of my books, you can also go to literaryladiesbooktour.com, and there's links to all of my books. Uh, You can get Terry's books at terrysgame.com. And you can join our tour if you are an author or if you want to learn about the publishing business. By all means, go to terrysgame.com. Get that book, Terry's Game. It is like a master class in print. I'm telling you, I couldn't put it down. I read it twice, and it was so enlightening. And uh, it's a testament to... If you want something hard enough and bad enough, and if you believe in your gift, and if you listen, if you listen to that voice deep within saying, yes, I can do this no matter what, believe me, you will accomplish anything in this world. I'm a true believer in self, self self-motivation. I want to thank you guys. Until next time, peace. blogtalkradio.com slash hear no evil is produced in part by Darlene Lewis of Future Network Productions. You can reach Future Network Productions by calling 646-548-9501. Thank you.